All right, so welcome back to the F350 Project Truck Build Tornado. Now, as you can see here, it's looking a little bit different. The gas system's gone, EFI is in its place. So today's episode, we're gonna run through exactly how we did it. So in order to convert to EFI, you need a few things. Let's run through the real basics before we start looking at some of this stuff in depth. First of all is the fuel tank. You may already have a fuel tank, that's great. I don't in this truck, so we needed a fuel cell. So we've got this one from Raceworks. It's about 76 liters, I believe. Has an integral sender unit, fill from the top, two large outlets here, and I've made this custom cradle to bolt in the truck. It also holds a lift pump on the side of it, so fuel comes out of here into the lift pump and into what will sit here, which is the second part of the system, a surge tank. Now this is from Deutschworks. Here we go, it is five and a half liters. So we get 76 liters here. We've got another five and a half liters. So we've got over 80 liters of capacity plus everything in lines as well. Uh, what this does is, as you can see here, it's a much smaller volume than your fuel cell is, which means if there's low fuel in here and the fuel's sloshing around, that pickup is, may get starved. So what this does is it always holds a volume of fuel in here. Even if it's down here, your fuel pump, again, we're using a Deutschworks in-tank fuel pump, will sit in here and it'll be able to pick up that fuel really low. So when you're converting to EFI, things like this are really important. You need to run surge tanks or you need to run baffled tanks in order to make sure that the system never starves of fuel. Filtration is ultra important as well. Here's the filter that we're running here, another Deutschworks filter. So this covers us basically for fuel storage and how to pump and filter the fuel. Second thing is transporting the fuel from here to the engine bay, and that's where you need your hoses. So you can just run with um, normal rubber hose. However, it must be rated for EFI. And if you're running ethanol, it has to be rated for ethanol as well. What I've actually gone for here is Teflon. So you can see that there, that is a Teflon inner liner around a nylon braid. So that's just, this nylon here is not very abrasive. We've got some stainless here as well. Uh, really doesn't matter. This is some rubber hose that I'll be using also for just the breather on top of the, on top of the tank. It needs, to, it needs a breather, so I'll just use some rubber hose for that. As well as here, we've got some rubber in-tank E85 hose. So uh, on my own channel, actually, uh, I covered off a video for this and how critical this is that you, you cannot use this. You cannot use just normal rubber hose inside a submersed fuel environment. You must use this stuff, so get that right. All, of, all the hoses here, all the fittings, these are all AN, I mean, you know, if your budget's not there for this kind of stuff, use rubber hose, brass fittings, whatever you need to do. So you've got the fuel, you can pump it, filter it, and move it all the way to the engine bay. The next part, of course, is getting it into the engine. So easy way to do it is one of these adapters. So if you've got a 4150 base plate manifold, bolt one of these on, bolt a neck like this on, or a 4150 throttle body on top. Air will come in, air will go through, Fuel comes in, happy days, you've done it now. Number one thing about here, the injectors I'm using with EFI is that uh, you get good data with your injectors and you get really good quality known quantities here. So Deutschworks again, they get the full flow data and these are, it says clearly what they are and they are not eBay special. So that, you know, it, uh, metering fuel into your engine is critical to how it runs. So if you get, some kind of dodgy knockoff injector from eBay, and you know it says 650cc there. If one's flowing 300 and one's flowing 200, and the other one's on 700, you can have a really really hard time tuning up your car. And uh, in a in a sequential setup, you'll you'll more than likely melt a piston. So we've got the fuel. Fuel comes out of here, runs in here, runs out of there, runs out, and it runs to the Turbo Smart fuel pressure regulator we've got. So this regulates the fuel pressure. Uh, to generally about base pressure about 40. So again, it's why you must run the right uh, fuel hose because your carburetor system that you're converting from probably ran at about anywhere, you know, around five to six or seven PSI. This system will run at a base pressure of 40. And if you're gonna put a, a turbocharger on it, 
it will then run at 40 psi plus however much boost you run so if you run 20 pound of boost that system is going to be having to hold 60 psi and those old carbureted rubber fuel lines just won't do it so once you've got all this you've got everything to pump the fuel around to meter the fuel to get it in um, in the engine you need something to control it all so fuel tech ft550 here uh, this will run our engine so it runs the spark timing um, the fuel when the fuel injectors fire it also turns the fuel pumps on and off however it also can control an ethanol sensor so we can run in our fuel system we can run normal unleaded fuel as well as ethanol fuel and this thing is smart enough to know what fuel is in the tank and to register and change the tune up based on exactly that so a really good solid EFI system is mega important here in order to get the system all running right. So last but not least, uh, tools. If you're going to use Teflon hoses, definitely recommend getting something like this. It will make the installation of the olives much, much easier. But also, uh, if you're going to do a, a fair few uh, AN hose and line setups, good quality tools will make a difference because they won't mark any of the fittings. So these ones are really good. They've got A in there and A in there to do both sides of the nut. So something like that's a really solid investment if you're going to be playing with cars over the long term. All right, enough of looking at it here. Let's install all this in the car and have a look. So here's our Dishworks search tank. Now, much easier to work on this when it's out and about on the bench. All these fittings knickknacks supplied with the search tank which is really handy don't need to go hunting around for all the fittings and find out what fits what o-ring seal so just install the o-ring there and no leaks at all no sealant required with that so it's really good next what we're going to do is just install the fuel pump now before you install the fuel pump you want to make sure you mock it up to make sure that it's at the right depth for installation you see you just use the tape measure to make sure it's at the right depth so the overall install depth's right also need to fit the filter first to make sure got a bit of clearance down the bottom before we installed that so just measure that hose use a raceworks e85 safe submersible fuel hose it's really important for this job just use here some lubricant to make sure it installs much easier when it's uh lubed in ready to go so mock that in place now measure off again tighten up the hose clamps one last measure. Once we've got them all tightened up and it's not going anywhere, do a final mock up and check, and we are good to go. Last bit here is just a little bit of wiring. Supply the wiring as well, so happy days. Move on now to preparing some of the fuel lines. So I've labeled all these very easy to install once I've uh, pre made them all. Just put them aside. Fuel line will come up through here, over the firewall, across over the fuel injectors, run back this way, back onto the rig, and then back to the fuel system. The injector installation is really straightforward. Just use some of this uh, super loop here or Vaseline if that's all you've got. Liberally apply to both top and bottom O-ring and that'll just uh, easily make it installation. Just uh, give a push and a twist motion to seat them in and that won't pinch any O-rings. Repeat that eight times over. Install them into our little rails here and now into our little uh, adapter plate. Makes the install really easy and straightforward for a V8 engine like we've got here. Now we'll move over to a manifold, which is an old spread bore cleaver manifold. So we've got a spread bore adapter plate. Bit old, unsure of the quality of it, so we'll just put a bit of RTV and another gasket for good measure. Work that on top, tighten up the 5 16th inch fittings here. Don't need to be Hercules, just turn my hand. Now time to run a few of the fuel lines. Now if you like what you've seen here with the fuel lines and the agonizers, here's just a quick rundown of how to install them. So we'll put our socket nut into the vice jaws first twist the hose into place you'll uh, eventually bottom out the hose just make sure it's down to this depth here where the threads are feed the hose into the socket make sure the threads are lubricated so they don't need cross thread and then use one of these AN spanners to tighten it down till the bottom's out all the way to the base you'll see there's a little gap here that's fine just align the socket nut to the fitting so it uh, has good appearance there here's another perspective of me installing another hose good job there and we're right to go okay time to fit it to the car so second to last and last hose being fitted to the car here we have our feed line for our surge tank from our lift pump and we've also got an e85 sensor so this flex fuel sensor sends a signal back to the fuel tech to tell it exactly what the ethanol content is 
in the ECU on the fly, which is great. Last thing we need to do is get the fuel into the fuel cell. So just gonna install this little access panel and boom, oh, there that go. That's why you wear safety glasses, but a few little rivets in place and uh, then we'll be good to go, move on. Last part here is some wiring. So got some twin core wire here. I like to use this tie cab wiring. The wire reels are really handy. Two core, three core makes your uh, wiring really easy because most of the sensors are two core, three core plugs. So makes it easy and straightforward and nice and neat. So fuel pumps and thermo fans are really high current draw. So make sure you use your wiring uh, to spec. So you probably have to upgrade that. So just like what we're doing here. Install is easy and straightforward and nice and clean when you use this kind of wiring. Next part is the ECU needs a engine vacuum signal. So does the fuel pressure regular as well. So we'll just take it off the back of this uh, 90 degree elbow here, which is fine. Last thing here, we've got some wiring plugs here. So this is a fuel pressure sensor. It tells the ECU what the fuel pressure is at all times. Just an easy push to seat uh, fuel pressure plug here. We'll just uh, nicely terminate it off and then use some heat shrinklet labeled so we know what it says in the future. So one of the most important parts of EFI conversion is spark plugs as well. So your early spark plugs might be a non-resistor. You need a resistor style spark plug. We're running these Denso ones here, Iridium, just for some extra longer life, which is great. And also electrical demand has greatly increased with the EFI system. So we've just gone and picked up this bolt-on Bosch 70 amp alternator, and that'll be a bolt-on for our Cleveland engine, which will mean supply the current demands that we now need. So that's it, got everything in the truck now. Fantastic, it's running mint, but I know the burning question you're asking out there, how much does that cost? Well, stay tuned because in the next episode, coming up in a couple of days, we're gonna run through how much all this costs so you get a better idea of how much it might cost you. And like always, support the people who support us.